Welcome to another video in the beginner series. Today I'll be covering the bowl gouge and the way I use it and uh, hopefully it'll be of use to some of you people starting out in this wonderful craft of wood turning. Um, I'd like to make a shout out to um, a turner from Australia called Brendan Stemp. Brendan has got some great videos up and uh, full of information, uh, tips and tricks. He is a production turner and uh, he is very kindly takes time out from his, uh, his his work, if you like, which after all, time spent making a video is, is time lost in, in producing work to sell and make a living. Um, he's got some great videos on resin, um, how, how, to, how to produce resin, uh, resin pieces, um, and also some very informative videos on, uh, on the skew chisel, as, many, uh, as well as many other videos. So I urge you to pop along to his channel subscribe to it and uh, learn from a man who knows an awful lot about wood turning. Um, another guy is Bob Hamilton and Bob hails from Canada and again Bob has a wealth of experience and very kindly spends the time to pass his knowledge to others by means of videos. Bob doesn't upload that often but uh, he did do an awful lot in the past and all the stuff that he has on his channel is relevant. So again I urge you to take a look at Bob's channel and subscribe and watch the videos and learn from them. I'll put the link down in the uh, description below as I usually do and I'd also like to make a um, I'd like to thank a guy called Keith Sharples who I've got to know over the last few months and Keith very kindly sent me a wood parcel um, or a parcel of wood and there are some woods I haven't worked with and one wood I haven't heard of. He sent me some holly, which I'm looking forward to turn. My favourite wood, a uh, piece of yew. Uh, some hawthorn, lovely big chunk of hawthorn there. Um, some ash, um, some sapili, which I've worked with before, courtesy of Tom Scandian, and that's brilliant. I just look forward to that. And a wood I've never heard of before called Mahonia, and it is a yellow, uh, a yellow wood and uh, I'm really looking forward to that's going to dry a bit further. Um, I don't know what I'll make out of that. I wonder if I'll make a little goblet out of it or something. I should think so. Um, thanks very much Keith, really appreciate it mate. And enjoy our, enjoyed our chat the other day as well. Again, as usual, a big big thank you to my subscribers for subscribing to my channel and supporting me the way you do, which makes it all worthwhile. And uh, we'll go over to the lathe now and uh, we'll get started. Okay, there are two main um, size of bowl gouge. Um, this one here which is a 3 8 bowl gouge and that is the normal um, size that comes with your um, starter kits or box sets. A 3 8 is the um, is the, what I call a standard size. Now this has got a swept back grind and um, the angle that I use um, and that angle is between the um, toe and the heel is 55 degrees on this particular bowl gouge and I have swept back wings. Now the important thing with swept back wings is that it's it's sometimes called an Irish grind. Um, it gives you more versatility with the, the gouge. Not everybody likes them. Um, I also have a standard grind um, bowl gouge which I'll show you later on. The important thing with the wings of a bowl gouge is that the um, toe to the heel it mustn't be concave because then you only have a cutting edge here and a cutting edge there so you want to try and get it as straight as possible from there to here or indeed slightly convex um, but you definitely don't want it um, sinking in or concave because they have problems with catches and very inconsistent cuts. Um, and that's really all there is to it with regards to the uh, type of grind um, for a bowl gouge. The, the other um, grind, as I say, is a straight across grind. This is another um, 3 8 bowl gouge. Steep angle there, it is 60 degrees and a straight over grind, no sweat back wings. The reason I have this one, or the reason I've uh, ground this one this way, is that sometimes 
when you're doing the inside of a bowl, getting that transition from the wall to the base of the inside of the bowl can be a little bit tricky if, uh, depending on the, the angle that you, you're actually doing, etc. And I find quite often that um, 60 degrees, I have actually tried 65 degrees and that works just as well. It's easier to get that transition around the bottom of the bowl and you can maintain your bevel contact. Um, and as with spindle gouges and with any gouge, bevel contact is very, very important. So that covers the um, grinds of the, of the bowl gouges. There are many other grinds as well. There's the standard um, degree, if you like, um, goes between 45 and 65 degrees. So really whatever suits you. The other thing as well, if you have this um, uh, steep grind, this 65 degree grind, uh, 60 degree grind, if you haven't got the ability to turn your headstock, swivel your headstock a bit when you're doing bowl turning, it, um, it also saves you reaching far over the bed with your arms to start the cut. When you start at the lip, making your way back down, you, you've got to, you know, stretch over quite a lot. And this, this means that your arms, if you like, are not stretched out too far. It also means that you can um, cut the bottom of the bowl easier as well as I explained. So those are two things to to um, to consider. The other thing, uh, the other bowl gouge I've got is a five eighths bowl gouge, and as is true with spindle gouges, different manufacturers measure different areas of the gouge to sell it. So some will measure across the um, across the flute, and others will measure the, uh, dia the diameter of the, of the bar that's used. And this one as well has swept back grind. Um, and again, I did try on this one to show you. There's a straight, um, a fairly straight uh, wing. And this wing is slightly convex. Both work well, but don't have a concave one. I've got a small ball blank here. It's about five and a half inches diameter. Um, and it's cedar, which is quite a nice wood to cut. A lot of people ask what um, height the tool rest should be. Well, like with on the spindle gouges, um, the tool rest, it's a personal preference, but I like to have it at a height where the tool is cutting just above centre. That's for spindle work. On um, bowl work, again, my the way that I hold the bowl for this particular, uh, hold the, the gouge for this particular job of going across here, I'm at the centre there, I'm down here, not, not a great angle because I'm literally doing a scraping cut and what you do here, it's, it's not a sheer scrape, um, it's, it is literally a scraping action and you're going across uh, like so. So I'll turn on and just draw the gouge across the face of the work at that angle. So what I'm basically doing, if you basically have the two wings virtually um, perpendicular and then open it out until you start to get a cut, As you can see, opposed to shear scraping, you're getting a powder almost. Okay, so we want to come around here now. So we're going to lower the tool rest a bit, so that we are virtually on centre line. When we present the tool to the work. So, a nice comfortable stance and we want to start here and work around. You could use a push cut, not a problem, but we're going to use a pull cut on this now and obviously the more you open your tool the more aggressive the cut is going to be. So my advice is to start off with a perpendicular flute, 90 degrees and then start to bring round. Important
Now the field will occlude slightly. Now we're getting a cutting action as opposed to a scraping action. But be careful because if you open it too much it'll get too aggressive and you'll get a catch. So we start around here again, open the flute slightly and bring it right. Now you don't want to get the whole curvature done in one go, no need, just a bit at a time, working away from the middle. And going up a bit further each time. Now the aspect of the tool doesn't change. Now that's the that's not the tricky part, that's that's the idea, is that once you've got your, um, put the tool rest a bit closer, once you've got your tool at the right angle to cut, you want to maintain that angle right the way around. Now you're not going to do that with your hands. If you to get a nice steady motion, you want to tuck the tool down into your hip and you use your hips to come round. Keep that tool at the same angle all the time. So find a, a nice comfortable position a lot of people tend to start off here, but of course when you start to come around here, you're running out of room, you're going to get into yourself. So you're going to fall over almost. So what you need to do is to take a stance where you are almost uncomfortable, if you like, at the start of the cut, with your weight on your right, and then with your hips moving and keeping the handle into your, into your hip for support, your hip is moving so that you're to there and then when you want to go a bit further you can come around here a bit more and start out here and move around now when you come to this area you're going to be like with me i haven't got the room to get behind so now you can change to a push cut so if we if we keep the bevel rubbing which is important obviously and you can pick that cut up, keep it down in your um, in your hip, rub the bevel, lift the handle slightly to get the cut, and then come round. That chattering is it's not uh, there's a little piece there which is not round yet. So you can come right round. So again, keeping the handle down in your hip, okay, and roll off. And then, as I say, you can pick up the cut with a push cut. Keeping bevel contact all the time. And going round. Now that, that knocking sound, as I say, is a knot um, here. So ignore that if you can. It's a very ridgy, ridgy cut. Not nice at all. So, what was I doing wrong? I wasn't getting proper bevel contact and I wasn't getting a good cut. So, we'll start again. Present the tool. Now 
Now that's come round to there, which is fine. A little bit there. Now you can then go to the push cut. Now we're on to start the hollow out. The aspect of the tool, again, in, into your hip and at an angle on centre line. Now the ideal scenario is that you don't actually lift the handle or lower the handle to get to the middle. So that is the goal, is to remain on the same plane with your cut. And all you will do is twist your gouge in your hand but you'll remain on the same plane. Obviously you might, well you will, have to go this way but you still remain at the same height and that should take you to the center. The, to just to the right of the nose and rub the bevel in. Rub the bevel and in. Now this isn't the best bit of wood to demonstrate because you have some knots in it. That's why you're going to get a bit of knocking. Start. And as you get deeper, you'll have to turn the blade in. So now you notice we're virtually at 90 degrees to the bowl now to start the cut. Double contact. And if I take my hand off, I can actually cut. I'm twisting very slightly. Again, we want to steepen the walls. How do we do that? How what how do we present the tool for deepening the walls? Well again, start. Fairly open, light, light cut, and then ride the bevel. And the part of the tool that we're cutting on as we're going around still remains this part here, just to the right of the nose. Now what we need to do is to move the rest closer to the work, so angle it in, so that way you're getting better support for your cutting edge. Again, starting out here, very light, then you can start the push. Now notice I'm not pivoting here because I'm starting behind until I get to sort of 90 degrees. I'm not moving the tool across. Don't need to. It can pivot. But as soon as I start to approach the middle of the bowl, I need to keep the aspect of the tool to the work so that the cutting edge remains there. Now to do that, I have to move the tool towards the centre. And don't forget that the wood is 
it's what I call dead wood there, slow wood, it's not moving very quick at all. So you need to ease up on the pressure, not that you're putting a lot of pressure on the work, but ease up on the pressure as you approach the middle because it's revolving much slower than it is at the outside. So we can pick up that cut now, just rub the bevel, pick the cut up, and as you see, I'm moving the tool towards the centre, keeping the same aspect. Pick up the cut here, I'm not doing this from here, I'm not leaving it there and, and, and sort of trying to pivot it, leaving this here on the fulcrum and pushing the tool through. What I'm doing is moving the tool towards the centre. Light, 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 lighter, 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 lighter. Because the wood is very slow there. Now for shear scraping, you place the um, the gouge with the both wings at basically on the on the material and very very slightly you just twist so that there is a 64th if you like of gap smooth off the surface Now cedar is a fairly oily wood, so you're not going to get those fine shavings that you would get with a, a less oily wood. But you can see the finish on there. There's no torn grain, and when we come to the end grain, there's no torn grain at all. And, I mean, you can start on that at a, a sort of 180, 220, which is what you're looking for. Hopefully now you can appreciate that when you've got the wings either dead straight or slightly convex that you're going to get no problems cutting this way. But if you have them, if there's a dip there between the back of the wing and the nose, you're obviously going to get problems because as you approach there, you're just going to be, cut, you're just going to be contacting there and there. The middle bit is not going to be contacting. So that is a good way of hopefully appreciating the necessity, if you're going to have um, swept back wings, that you must have them in that shape and not concave in any way. Well, I hope that's been of some use to you. Um, I'm sure it'll, as with the last one, will generate some questions and also comments from people who know how to do bowls better than I do. And that's the whole idea of uploading these videos. Um, thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers now. Hello again. Welcome to the... Um, the, the uh, one, two, three. Hello again. Welcome to another video at beginning. No, good. Hello again. Hello again. Hello again. Another guy I'd like to... Um, to mention is um, I can't remember his name now. <laughs> he is really a specialist in uh, pepper mills and um, various other uh, other turnings. Uh, he also does a lot with um, that stuff. That he <laughs> resin. That's the word. Resin. <laughs> oh dear, start again.